Hi there. Do you want shorter incidents and fewer escalations? Let's talk about how Rundeck and PagerDuty can help you make that happen. So I first gave this talk at the PagerDuty Summit 2019 in San Francisco. We love PagerDuty, right? It's, uh, it's great at what it does. It's great at alerting our people. It's great at mobilizing our people. Um, it's great at the, managing the communication between those, uh, between those responders. Uh, but what happens when it's time to take action? What happens when it comes time to having to go actively do something to diagnose or repair the, uh, the incident? One of a few things tend to happen. Often the responder goes digging through a wiki trying to find the right procedure, assuming that the wiki is even correct. Or maybe they jump into their home directory looking for scripts they've used in the past, hoping that they still work. But most likely, the problem just gets escalated to an already overworked subject matter expert. Why? Because that subject matter expert is holding in their head the up-to-date procedures and how to invoke all the right scripts or tools. Not only does this make the incident last longer, but the escalations push expensive interruptions into the rest of the organization. So Rundeck is here to help you replace all that with Runbook Automation. Self-service operations procedures that anyone in your organization with the right permissions can use to safely diagnose and resolve incidents. So rather than having to fumble through a wiki or escalate, they can take immediate action. At their fingertips, they'll have up-to-date automated workflows that know how to invoke all the right scripts or tools to diagnose or resolve an incident. Now anyone can safely execute the procedures that previously only your subject matter experts had the knowledge to perform. Incidents will be shorter, and there'll be fewer escalations. This is a huge savings. So let's talk about an example. Uh, here's one that uh, might be a bit simplistic, but is not all that uncommon um, in how this pattern works, right? Where the L1 or the first responder comes upon the incident, uh, they look at it and say, ah, oh, it's a problem with this particular application. They escalate to the on-call for that application. That person says, ah, oh, this definitely looks like an application problem, gets escalated to a developer. The developer says, this is a problem connecting to the, the database. So we must be a database problem. They escalate to the uh, database team. They look at it and say, this is actually a network problem, right? Uh, we, uh, there's uh, some issue connecting between the, uh, the database and the, uh, and the application. So what's happened is we've lost all this time uh, for this particular incident. But also, uh, that's a little bit of distraction and interruptions that we've kept injecting into the organization. And in most organizations, this sort of pattern repeats itself time and time again, and we're delaying and interrupting all the other work that we're trying to do to move the business forward and suffering from a lot longer incidents than we need to have. So now let's talk about how this could have been different. What if we had empowered that initial responder with a run deck job that called a series of diagnostics. You know, these could be shell scripts, system commands, uh, Ansible scripts, uh, Python scripts, uh, Perl scripts, whatever, whatever uh, those teams are, uh, different te subject matter experts and teams are comfortable with, they could provide those diagnostics to that initial responder in the form of a run deck job that they can run to uh, run all the different diagnostics to try to zero in on what the issue is before um, we have to escalate to anybody. And then when we do escalate or call other people into the incident, they have all that information to work from and they can quickly move uh, to a resolution that could most likely be another run deck job that they call. And in the enterprise, there's a lot of issues that happen again and again. You know, these are known issues, re re repeated issues, things where we haven't had the budget or the time uh, to go around and, uh, and fix. We know they're gonna happen. We know they're gonna happen again. Um, and in this scenario, we can empower that first responder with uh, a diagnostic job that could uh, detect that uh, known problem, and then also a repair job that knows how to fix that known problem, whether it's a restart or clearing a cache or resetting a connection or rolling back a configuration. Uh, so this way, we can solve this problem in a matter of minutes uh, rather than having to go through the repeated, oh, here we go again, let's escalate. It's probably that thing that we knew that happened before. Okay, let's talk a bit about Rundeck, where you define your Runbook automation. Then we'll talk about the features of the integration with PagerDuty. So Rundeck is made to work with the tools and skills that you already have. Your org has plenty of expertise in moving around the bits. Uh, what is more difficult is creating the workflows, the error handling, the notification, the access controls, the APIs, etc. All the things you need to create Runbooks out of those uh, tools and scripts and commands. 
So Redneck is the easiest way to create workflows across the tools you have and fill in the gaps where things are still manual. So a couple of key things to note, um, Rendex really about using your existing tools and scripts, right? So Rendex doesn't require you to replace your existing tools, scripts, or favorite languages. Uh, there is no DSL. There is no new, new automation language to learn. Rendex is all about reusing the skills you already have. You can mix and match. One step can be an API call. Another can be a shell script. Another, a system command. Another is, say, like an Ansible playbook or a chef cookbook. Uh, Rundeck does the hard part, which is the workflow and the access control across those tools and scripts and APIs it makes it easy to create those procedures and hand them off to other folks. Uh, it's also good to note that Rundeck is infrastructure aware. So Rundeck wants to know about your infrastructure, right? Uh, Rundeck is designed to pull that data from any number of sources. So for example, EC2 might know about your hosts, right? And Chef knows about the dependencies, and Nagios knows about the current state. Uh, all that data um, can be pulled into Rundeck and uh, use that to keep Rundeck's resource model up to date. So this up-to-date knowledge of your infrastructure um, is most commonly used to dynamically target where you want your automation to execute, uh, but it's also very useful for dynamically updating the parameters in your scripts or, or, or API calls or uh, tool invocation. Uh, to make sure that it's even easier to hand these tools off as they're always being kept up to uh, up to date. Rendek is also made for DevOps and cloud native ways of working. Whether it is point and click in the GUI or text files through your software development lifecycle, Rendek can work the way your team wants to work. Also, there is a fully equivalent API, so anything that you can do in the interface, you can also do through Rendek's REST API. Rendek is also security and compliance friendly. Rundeck's fine-grained access control features combined with the ability in Rundeck to create guardrails that guide people towards smart choices makes it safe uh, to hand out access to specific operations procedures to a broad audience. The access control features combined with Rundeck's logging make Rundeck a hit with security and compliance teams. You can go faster and be under control. Everybody likes that. So let's talk about some of the features of the current integration between Rundeck and PagerDuty. The first one here is the ability to automatically trigger run deck jobs at the start of a PagerDuty incident. Uh, this uses an event handler on the PagerDuty side and run deck's advanced webhooks capability. Uh, this is often used for uh, gathering diagnostics. So if we see a certain uh, incident is triggered of a certain urgency in a certain service, um, maybe automatically start gathering diagnostics. So before your responder is even logged in, um, they have a leg up in that uh, the diagnostics are already being gathered. And uh, we see, also see some people using this for doing some auto remediation for specific types of, uh, of incidents, a uh, very handy feature. Another feature is the ability to trigger run deck jobs during an incident using PagerDuty custom actions. So these are the custom menu items you can define. Uh, could be scoped to say a particular service. If there's an incident in a service, uh, it'll automatically uh, provide this access to call these particular run deck jobs. In this example, I have one for running diagnostics and another for running a restart. The idea is you know, you want to be able to put actions into the hands of your initial responders so they can take quick action. Run deck can also call the PagerDuty API, which is very handy for having run deck jobs update incident notes in PagerDuty. So when you're running a job, uh, you can integrate it so that run deck will automatically update the incident with um, a link to a message and then a link to uh, the job output. This all goes into the timeline in the incident. So when people are either looking back on it in a post-mortem situation or in the middle of the incident, when new people arrive, they can go back through the timeline, uh, see what run deck jobs were run and click through and uh, see the actual output and see what happened. Those of you that are already run deck users know that run deck has a great number of notification plugins and uh, one of them that's been there for a while is the PagerDuty um, plugin. So this uh, part allows Rundeck notifications to trigger a PagerDuty incident uh, by sending events from Rundeck into PagerDuty. Um, you can use these events for all sorts of things. Um, there's various hooks uh, in Rundeck that will call um, an event, uh, maybe on a job start or job success or a job has exceeded a certain duration or most likely a job uh, failure. Um, but you can use these notifications to uh, send information back into uh, to PagerDuty. So I want to wrap it up here by reiterating 
a point uh, that I think is an important one is that Rundeck is really not there to replace the tools or the things that work for you today. Rundeck's really there to make it better, right? So we have similar integration that I was describing for PagerDuty. We also have with um, other ticket and ITM, ITSM systems. Uh, we, you know, you can use all the existing tools and scripts and languages that work well for your organization. You don't have to throw any of that away. Uh, Rundeck also makes it easy to plug in any gaps where things are still uh, manual and they haven't yet been automated. And Rundeck's really designed to work with whatever infrastructure that you have, whether it be bare metal, VMs, um, on-premises, uh, in the public cloud, um, Rundex made to uh, work with it all. And our goal is to be the runbook automation layer um, that helps you tie all these things together so we can have shorter incidents and fewer escalations. Okay, thanks for watching. Go to this URL, rundeck.com slash pagerduty for more information, to watch a demo, or to try it out for yourself. Let's get started today with shorter incidents and fewer escalations.